What is happening guys? We're Craig and Amy and you are watching King in It. And we are halfway through pushing this wheelie bin the length of Wales for mental health. And we're starting to think that maybe we've bitten off a bit more than we can chew. If you saw part one of this beast of a mission, then you'll know that it didn't come without its challenges. Ah. Oh. Oh, I feel like the bin's going to drop on my head because it's so steep. I'm getting sweat in my eyes, it's that hot now. <laughs> it's really warm. We battled the heat, the rain, the blisters, and even had a fight with bin diesel. <sighs> First injury, really bin to the shin. We're making history, yeah. And the second half wasn't much easier, but we were here at the halfway point, 104 miles down and feeling, well, pretty shattered really. Don't ask me to do stuff again, Craig. <laughs> Woman just drove past and went, what are you doing? <laughs> we had 96 miles to go and only seven days left to make it to the finish line on time. So Gary just crashed his van and we've just popped our tire. Day 10, it's raining a lot, but we don't care. Nothing's gonna stop us today to do 15 miles. Just doing a couple of holes in the bin. It rained a lot last night. And it's like a swimming pool in there. The day started off wet but wonderful. We can always rely on the great Welsh weather. <laughs> First hurdle of the day. Oh dear. No problem, Nige. These wet, soggy days are definitely the most testing. We started really hilly today as well. We're trying to distract ourselves because if we constantly focus on how much we're hurting and the blisters and just moan about it, it just brings the mood down and we both feel rubbish. So. We've got Mariah Carey blaring. <laughs> we're having a little dance and we're just doing 10 steps at a time to get up the hill. Five past 11, dinner time. It feels so good to sit down. Two miles, he said, we had to go over a bloody mountain. I know. <laughs> one flapjack between us and he died, gah. I told you to bloody take plenty of food. <laughs> Last push of the day. Go on, kid. Coming up on 16 miles. What a day, massive day today, babes. Look how slow we're going, Craig. <laughs> like, everything is so... Every step, every step counts, though. Well right. done, babe. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I'm a prune. <laughs> We've been out in the water all day. Whoa, careful now. This is not my skin. This is just a comp compete. Well, that bit of skin, though, yikes. Plaster. Feet are falling apart. Look at that. It looks like something off the walking dead. <laughs> the state of those feet, man. What a wrinkly one. That looks like a 90 year old's foot. <laughs> it literally looks like it's just been dug up. That's so gross, Craig. Why is it dead? It's just, it's been so wet all day, is it? It's just. <laughs> it's been so wet all day, babe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lads, get this. We have actually been nominated for a Just Giving Award. We're up for the most creative way to fundraise and out of thousands of entries, somehow Craig and Amy have made it down to the last three. We would absolutely love it if you voted for us to win by heading to the link in our description. All you have to do is click to vote for us and then scroll down to the bottom of the page and put in your email address. You can do that for us, can't you? Thanks very much, back to the studio. As we struggled with another dull day and lots of tiring hills, we tried to remember why we were doing this. We met some extremely brave people on this journey who were courageous enough to tell us their stories. Hi, so back in, uh, well, May of last year, um, things took a, a real low where um, I was driving to work one day and thought I was going to take the decision to literally just turn left on the dual carriageway, head into, head into Chester and, um, and literally finish everything. It sort of came about because we, I've got two children in the Navy, work is, has been really stressful. I'm a, a very sort of, you know, keep things close to my chest and it was just... I think that it just things got just to a boiling point where something needs to give. And the strange thing was, on that day, I t my wife works at the orthopaedic in Gaboin, and I texted her and I said, "I'm not very well." She turned around and, and said, "Okay," with a kiss. And, and what it was it was it's more of a thing of I wasn't brave enough to pick the phone up. It was more of a thing of I wanted her to phone me to say what is wrong, and then I would have turned around and come home. The 30th of November, um, as we mentioned, things sort of took a turn for the worse where everything in the jigsaw was there apart from one piece. And that one piece, you know, I, I was in effect gonna hang myself. 
But the crazy thing it was was that where it was going to happen, I thought, well, if I connect on to that, well, it's going to snap anyway, so it, it's not working. And it was that split decision, then I thought, I, I just need to get home. Just as Richard had his struggles and fought through them with some help, we were blessed by an angel called Steve, who cycled all the way up the mountain, on his bike, in the rain, in his flip-flops, to help us. Stevie boy! He was legend, made it up here on his bike. Steve's also just told us that the track gets way worse, so we might have to carry the bin. Oh, my back. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. <laughs> this is so heavy. <laughs> Steve came when we needed him and got us through the rough terrain and the next four miles. And this is how we make up some time. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, we got a dodgy leg. <laughs> Quick, slow down. It's very stormy right now. <laughs> and as one champion left us, another set arrived in the form of Craig's family. It was lovely to have some familiar faces join us for a walk in the rain. Home squad has showed up Yay! in full force. <laughs> <laughs> so we got my mum, dad, my brother, the stunt double today, is having a push. Danielle, his fiance, congratulations. <laughs> so uh, we've got 3.6 miles to get to Bilf. And Tom said he's going to do it all. Thanks, Aww. mate. Tom is actually training for an Ironman, so follow him here because he's going to be doing it in September. Yeah. Mum's had enough walking, so she's in the bin now. <laughs> Pretty sure this bridge takes us into Bilt Wells. Last mile of the day. 17.3 miles in the bag, Craig Holmes. Big shout out to the fam for giving us the extra push today. What we really needed today was one of those slower days where we couldn't be asked, but we've actually ended up doing 18 miles. So nice to see you all. Hopefully see some of you on the finish line. It's the longest day. It is. It feels like it, yeah. Do we look tired? No, we don't. I'm shattered. Our last half a mile to custard the bus right up to the doorstep. So I'm a suicide survivor from 2016. I've suffered from mental health since 2008 after an attack for being me. Suicide was my only option at that moment in time. I couldn't find a way out. I was in a horrendous relationship. Um, it was physical abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse, anything. So much manipulation. Um, I lost everything in the day. My job, my relationship my, my um, house and everything. I wasn't talking to my family. Um, the only way I found out was to, to finish it. So the only day I chose to wear leggings is really boiling. Gab, have you got any shorts? <laughs> we might need to make a new hole. <laughs> well, do you need to come to tap holes? You can use it to sleep in the night. <laughs> <laughs> After a few hundred yards, it was apparent that Gary's shorts were a bit too big. And it wasn't long before we had our first fluffies on the day to cheer us on. Thank you so much for coming out to support the wheelie bin challenge <laughs> and for bringing your little doggy. <laughs> oh, they got a dog. This is Penny and Brody. Oh, oh my god, so they're cute. amazing. We'd like to thank this week's sponsor, Athletic Greens. What's the matter, love? I just can't wake up. Put down that fake wake up call and get that down your neck. Set yourself up for the day and take it in the morning for optimal performance. AG1 by Athletic Greens is another level of health and nutrition. With only one serving per day, it fills the nutrient gaps and provides your body with everything it needs to feel energized, fighting fit and on top of the world. Replace your morning coffee for an AG1 and not only is it cleaner and healthier, it's also caffeine free. So this green stuff will give you a massive energy boost without sending your heart racing and without giving you palpitations, which is a massive tick from me. This special blend of ingredients supports everything from your nervous system to your immune system, aging recovery, and most importantly, giving you more energy. So maximize your potential and live a stronger, bouncier, more alert life. And look, just after one pack. So if you're wondering how it will make you feel and how it tastes, 
give it a go. Head over to athleticgreens.com forward slash king in it and get five free travel packs and a year supply of vitamin D with your very first purchase. Let's push a wheelie bin. There she is, fresh back tyres. Oh yeah, they look much better. Good boy, Billy Diesel. Morning routine, we got this down. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> you pull these out and they just catch you on your finger, on your finger. Oh, Craig. <laughs> got it down if you go. How do you think we're getting on then, Gal? Honest opinion. I think you're doing outstanding, honestly. Good. Even when I was super fit, I think I would struggle doing this. Yeah? This is a, a challenge in our business. So when you first turned up and gave it to me, this idea, I thought, you pay me in idiots. And I, <laughs> I don't think it, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> So we've just come over a huge hill, that's why we're going down it now. But right on the top you could see the whole of the Brecon Beacon, so we know that to be pretty close to home. I feel like these next sort of few days we're going to have more friends, more family come up and meet us because we're not miles away, you know. So I think we've got 40 odd miles which just seems like an absolute breeze. I'm really excited, we're, we're feeling great. The bodies are sore, but we just cannot wait to make that finish line on Sunday. Fabulous. That night, we were joined by ITV News to cover our story on national television. It felt so nice to have our story shared and we were able to let the people of Wales know exactly what we were doing, why we were doing it, and that it was for an amazing cause. Back here on Wales at Six, we love to share the weird and wonderful things people do for a good cause. And we've got a particularly good one for you this evening. YouTubers Craig Holmes and uh, Amy Bannister from Barry have set themselves the challenge of travelling from north to south Wales in a wheelie bin. Yes, you heard that right. Well, Jonathan, the good news is they're actually much closer to the end of the challenge than they are to the beginning. A really gruelling 13 days. Don't mis mistake all the colours and, and all the fun stuff around. It's a really important cause, isn't it? Well, Amy and Craig, you can tell us all about it. So we, we are in Brecon now, but you started off in the north. We did. Beaumaris Castle, 13 days ago, yeah. about 150 miles ago. That seems like such a long time ago. But somehow we've got 50 miles left and we've only got four days to do it. Yeah. <laughs> So hi, I'm Chloe, um, I'm 24. I've had ups and downs in my mental health for years, um, ever since I was a teenager. Um, I was diagnosed with anxiety when I was 15, um, and I've had medications, therapies, the whole shebang, and um, I've always got by. But then when I was 19, second year of uni, I had a really, really bad crash, and I, um, I ended up in crisis because I tried to take my own life and that was a really big deal because my parents, like nobody really knew how, how bad it was at that time. And then really recently, my circumstances changed. I moved out of the city and I found myself on my own again. Um, so I had a bit of a relapse and that was this Christmas just gone. So um, that was a really, really dark time. The next morning, we were met by our Peru crew. We'd taken a group tour to Peru a month before and some of the people that came on the tour flew over to little old Wales to come and help us push. We felt like the luckiest pair on the planet. Some of these guys came from America, Canada and even Scotland but little did they know what was in store for them today. How many stopping for lunch? Uh, there's about 17 of us. Yeah. <laughs> Day 14, for 17 let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had reached the Taft Trail, a monumental milestone. Yeah! <laughs> so we've got a massive team of people today. We've got a big day, so it's going to be great help. On the home stretch, babes. On the home stretch, kid. <laughs> we've just met a wonderful family. They've just come up all the way from Swansea. And thank you so much to Kewen for giving us his pocket money. 40 quid, it melts my heart, Craig. What a legend, so thanks lovely. mate. We've got a few miles to get in today. Is everyone, you all joining us for the 16 miles today, yeah? <laughs> 16! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> They're locked in. How is it, Marie? Great. Honest. Hardest thing you've ever done. Hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> See the beads of sweat on her forehead already. Like. <laughs> oh, <Josh! laughs> oh. <laughs> Try and keep us alive until we get to Cardiff if you can. I'll try. <laughs> Look at this, look at Shaf, look what he's done today. He's got, he's got to feed the 5,000 today, haven't he? It's like a soup kitchen. The best part about it is just being the community again. Just meeting so many of you out on the road. Everybody supporting and donating online and just cheering us on. And just the reason why we're doing it, you know, it means so much to the two of us. It's really a really special cause for me. Big Moose have helped my friends and family through some really, really, really dark times. And they're literally saving lives with their work. I can't really tell you how much this means to me to be doing this. <laughs> and we're doing this for Lee, you know, we want to keep Lee's message going she was such a brave soul when it came to talking about her mental health and speaking out about it and not being ashamed of it so if you are one of those people who is struggling like i know we say it time and time again but just speak up speak to somebody speak to anybody people will listen to be able to do this and keep lee's light shining it's been incredible, it really has. And I think it's gonna be a really emotional end just to see everybody there. And if you do find yourself trapped in a house and feeling a bit low or agitated or anxious, try going for a walk, because it really clears your mind. It gets you away from social media. You get your blues and greens in and it clears your head and you know you get the endorphins as well. Day 14, 16 miles done. Team effort. <laughs> Back to camp. <laughs> Day 15, 12 miles, let's go. Oh, it smells amazing. He's kicking off ears because I didn't message him. I you know? messaged him an hour ago and said, tell me when you're time you get you and then I'll have the dinner ready. Oh, it's not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Go on lads, you got it. We've got uh, one of our youngest recruits, Blossom. Superstar that she is in the bin today. How comfy is it? Really comfy. Really comfy, yeah. <laughs> so we just got a free pint of squash from the local pub and we've just met up with some friends who have given Craig a electric skateboard. So um, we'll be there in no time. We'll see you Saturday. <laughs> oh, Tires is pop. Is it? Yeah, actually. <laughs> oh no way. We haven't got any spares either. Oh, it's probably ripped open. Oh my gosh, we only changed that the other day. <laughs> so we've done 170 miles. Rob pushes it for half a mile. Popped it. <laughs> Popped it. <laughs> Rob's pushing me. Just goes, what's that noise? And then it just goes, push, and I'm like, oh. I saw him get a pocket knife out. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's too easy for you. Oh no, we're in the middle of nowhere. How are we going to manage this? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Full speed. <laughs> <laughs> He's got into a bush. <laughs> Gary just called me and he said that he just drove the van into a bush and by the sounds of it he said that the trailer swung around and smashed into the side of the van as well and he's cut his arm. Oh, yeah. So I don't know how bad it is, but I hope he's alright. He's telling me it's alright to pick us up still. So now we got a flat tire and a, a broken van, so it's all happening today. It only happened to us right at the end of this challenge, yeah. but Gary was trying to send us to Quick Fit to see if they could fix it, but <laughs> I don't think they'll be able to fix that. So we do have spears, but they're really bold. So we're gonna put the bold ones on the front and switch the front ones to the back. Okay. What's happening here then, Trev? Uh, we're having a Dettol foot bath because uh, we've gained a lot of friends today, AKA blisters, back with a pure vengeance. Oh baby, look at that. Look at that beauty. Look at him. He's he's the biggest. Fake tan my uh, fake tan my feet last night, so they're a little bit um brown. <laughs> but look at the bottom of those toes. Minging. Oh. Bad boys on that side as well. Nice. Feet are bad, feet are okay, feet are getting bad again. I can't believe we're almost finished, Craig. But it couldn't be easy, could it? Oh no, no. There's always something that goes wrong at the end of a challenge for Craig and Amy. 
But yeah, counting down the miles and just seeing it go down and down. We're on 20 odd now. Mm. Seems like nothing. It's two days and we'll be at that finish line. I can't wait. I'm just can't wait to go to bed, you know. Today is the penultimate day of the wheelie bin challenge. We were finishing tomorrow, so we made our way to our last park up for the night in a little golf club in Whitchurch, just outside of Cardiff, where the finish line awaited us. Getting ready for the day, you know. Soggy one today, lads, but uh, let's be having you. Good morning, welcome to day... 16. <laughs> We've only got one Is left. 16, only one to go. I hope the weather holds up for you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Get go. Out. Get out. Get out. Our last spare wheel. And look at the state of this. It's not spare, is it? It's old. It's an old, bold one. Should have brought more, really. Water. Check. Bin bags. Check. This other bin doesn't get wet. Snack bag. We've got some muffins. Lucas made. Skittles. Snack bag. <laughs> Luckily, we had Craig's sister Becky come join us for the whole 15 mile penultimate day. 16 days in, we were really starting to feel it, and every step felt like a ton of bricks on our feet. So uh, we let Becky do most of the pushing. Sorry, Beck. Our Gary, our national treasure, waiting for us. I can smell it from here with food. I'm absolutely starving. My feet are killing. Cannot wait for this. Craig, oh, yeah. here's your tea. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually yours, so come and get it. 15 miles, Craig. 15 miles, can't believe it. That's just to the outskirts of Cardiff, though. So yeah, yeah. Probably a little bit further. But that's all right, it doesn't seem like anything. Down from 200. So we've just seen the sign for Cardiff, and you will never believe it, but we have just hit 30,000 pounds! <laughs> 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 30 oh, grand, you can't believe God, it. I, I was so confused because it was nowhere near that this morning. So massive thanks to Cara and Nate. You guys are such beautiful humans. So thanks for your generous donation. It makes me so emotional just thinking that people are with us on this trip. You have to know where it's going. Like you're literally saving lives by giving some money. Yeah. You're helping somebody who's struggling with their mental health to have a counseling session, to have a therapy session. And I want you to know that. I want yeah. you to know what you've done today. Very, very, very <sighs> crucial and helpful. So thank you all. We love you guys. Yeah. Still got a bit to do, but we're all Oh, there. we're buzzing! <laughs> yeah, we're buzzing. Well done, babe. It's massive! Well done. It's massive well amount of money! End of day 16 with a full squad of people! Yay! Yay! <laughs> we can actually see Gary from Barry. Third, basically 13 miles we've done today. Oh. It's been emotional, but this guy, this team here, oh, Roger Legend! Yay! Yay! <laughs> oh, there it is! Shall we shining star! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Calm down, eh? <laughs> it's the end of day 16. We're all absolutely pooped, and Craig won't get out to go and get the van. You can't make me. <laughs> <laughs> Slut. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Craig. We voted, and you lost, unfortunately. So How about this? No. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Someone's got to go because Gary's kicking us out. I'll fight you all. <laughs> you haven't got any strength left, mate. No. <laughs> <true>. <laughs> Just stand them with all two, and I'll slap. I crying. can't even hold this camera up. <laughs> Last night with the team, Shawnee boys chefing. What's on the menu tonight, mate? Stir fry. Oh, baby. <laughs> Sean was crying earlier because he's, he's going to miss us big time. I was, I was getting pretty emotional. Yeah. <laughs> How are you guys feeling? How's the trip been for you? It's been amazing. Yeah. Seriously, like I can't believe how fast it's gone and that's already coming to an end. Like it just feels like I blinked and 17 days went by so quickly. And it's been just amazing seeing whales and meeting people. They've been so kind and so generous. And yeah, it's going to be really sad to leave. I know, I know it is, isn't it? What about you, mate? Feeling sad that it's over and it went really fast, but Craig's been bullying me the whole time. So <laughs> that'll be alright. <laughs> Cannot wait to leave. <laughs> He's lying on Him and Gary were bullying me. 
Cheers, team. Cheers, team. The best, the best team. team going. Ever. Mm. Cheers, one and all. <laughs> Excellent yes. job done by yeah, all. My name is Alice. I'm 32. And I struggled with depression when I was 20, turning 21. It happened when I was in university and I was doing my teaching degree. So there's quite a lot of pressure on it, which was kind of quite scary, quite daunting. You know, I didn't really want to feel like I'd wasted everything that I'd put into it. Each day is getting tougher to go in. It was kind of, you know, trying to get yourself out of bed. I was really struggling with sleep. I was struggling with eating. You know, I was anxious. I was feeling sick and I was kind of, felt like I was hiding it quite well. I woke up one morning and it just kind of hit really, really hard and I couldn't get out of bed. I just started crying and I was just like, right, I'm not going in today. So I rang him up and said, I can't come in, you know, just made up something. And then my mate's like, oh, why are you not going in today? So he comes into my room and he's, I couldn't really tell him, I couldn't really get the words out. I couldn't really say anything. And he's like, you don't need to say anything. Like, I already know. And he was like, my dad went through this. You know, he struggled with depression. He said, I'm seeing the same, the same things with you. And he goes, right, you need to go to the doctor. I'm going to walk you to the doctor today. Homeward bound. Homeward bound. Day 17. Last day on the road. Let's make it a good one, even though it's raining. Oh, there's a bit of blue sky there. That'll be fabulous. <laughs> Thank you so much to everybody for helping along on this journey. Um, yeah, the last stretch. Let's, Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go team. Let's do it. William and Dallin. We've just changed Lee's batteries, so she's shining bright. Ten miles to go. Let's get you to the finish line. Leaving Aldi, we were feeling enormously proud, strong and determined to hit our 3 p.m. finish line. We had another lush surprise. Our friend Aidan came to join us for the last day. It wasn't the most beautiful part of Wales, but with only 10 miles to go, we didn't care. We were following the map and we've hit a massive dead end. So the only way around is to go up and over this bridge and we're going to have to carry the bin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take it from you, Craig. Don't worry. I got it. Well done, team. I just can't believe we're finally on the last day. It makes me feel so weird. I don't quite know how I feel, to be honest. On one hand, I'm like buzzing. Cannot wait to get to the finish line. Can't wait to see everyone. I mean, <laughs> I hope there's gonna be people there. I'm gonna miss all the beeps and all the support and all the people that have come out. And I'm gonna miss Gary every morning, bringing us breakfast, making us lunch. Just the chats that we have with the guys seeing Alia and Sean every morning and getting all the support from them. I've always worried about doing something physical and not being able to do it because I'm not the fittest person. But I thought to myself, you know what? Let's flip and do it. I said, let's not rely on Craig. Let's not have him push the bin the whole way and you be sat in it the whole time. Challenge yourself. And I really have. I feel really proud of myself. I don't think I've ever said that before. I've stepped up. And if I've ever needed to push that bin, I've been the one to push it. Just feeling it, just feeling it today. It's been a very emotional trip with everyone telling their stories and I just feel so happy and grateful that I've been able to be, be the one that came on this journey. I feel like Lee's been with us the whole way. You know, we've got her name on the bin and whenever dragonflies come and butterflies land on the bin, I, I just know she's been with us and hopefully we've made her proud too. The wheelie bin challenge showed us that if you have a wild idea and you share it, then you'll be joined by some wild people. These are your people, the ones that back you and believe in your weirdness. Keep these people close and you can all be weird and wild together. We couldn't describe the buzz of walking with a whole squad of people on the last mile. The adrenaline was pumping, but so was the emotion of the whole journey. The one thing that we thought about was the friends that we met on the way and the advice that they had shared. I think the biggest thing for me that I took from it was one, learning how my body kind of speaks to me and how I feel about things and actually being able to read the bigger picture now. I got all the help from all the right people. My parents were amazing. I met an amazing girl who I'm now married to. Um, and it was just, you know, everything fell into place. It was though I was meant to attempt it that day and not succeed. 
and here I am now, bigger, better, stronger. I came and stayed with Tom here for a little while, I took myself away from the situation and um, I was really, really thankful to have, again, loads of support through the like, crisis team and um, my parents and I decided to quit my job because I realised that that was a massive factor in it all. Um, and I packed up and, and did a, took a massive risk and moved to London on my own and it was the best decision I ever made and now I'm on the up and this is, at 24 years old, I'm at the best I've ever been. It's been a roller coaster. there's no such thing as a straight line when it comes to mental health, you know, I thought I was better and going for it and there will be ups and downs but as long as you've got a good support network around you and it's important to be open and let people know what's happening because I, I didn't do that the first time around and that's probably what made things worse. I can see the goal ahead of me now. I think these little blips, you know, I've been on a couple of yoga retreats, I've got, we've got two booked in Spain next year, and it's now just looking for the future, you know, looking at that thing of when the kids come home, right, this is what we're going to do. You know, we've got two children, I'm thinking, well, we brought them into the world, so why would you want to take yourself away from that? And it's that old saying, isn't it? you know, that's, your windscreen's bigger than the mirror, the rear mirror, because you need to look forward, look into the future. And I think that's what I've sort of taken, you know, from it. More people out there, certainly men, and don't get me wrong, you know, there's a lot of ladies out there as well who don't want to talk about it, but I think you need to open up. Yes, it is easier to talk to a stranger about it. To speak out and, you know, you're not talking to a brick wall, you know, you're talking to somebody who might turn around and think, oh. And I've noticed from how I've been and other people that the change and it's just to get out and help as many people as possible. My biggest piece of advice would be to speak to someone, someone that you trust. It can be a family member, it can be a friend, but sometimes I understand that people aren't gonna be in that situation, so you've gotta be really brave, you've gotta take that one final step. And you'll be surprised how many people will react the right way, and they'll be so helpful. And you'll also have some people that will come out of nowhere, like I did, and just be the best people ever. And then from there, you take those first steps and you can take that journey, and you know, it's gonna be a bit of a roller coaster, it's gonna be up and down, but Ultimately, it takes you in the right direction. Be you, stand your ground, don't hold back. Know that you are number one. You have to fight for yourself. There's no way around it, you have to fight for yourself. Know what's real. If you're sensing something's not right, get out of there. Get out of there, get the help you need and hold your head high. If you don't hold your head high, you're gonna struggle. And there's always a positive to every negative. It might take a little while to find it, but you'll get there. If I've got through it, anyone else can tell someone it's really important nobody can help you if they don't know so the best thing you can do is try to communicate what you're going through and allow people to ask questions just be open um, about what's going on but also don't be hard on yourself it's okay to have really bad days so just tell someone be open for those of you who are suffering for those who have lost someone for those of you who are supporting somebody and for those who might be scared to speak up. You are stronger than you know. You are more loved than you realize. And you are here on this earth for a reason. Keep fighting, stay strong, and speak up for Lee. The biggest physical challenge, the biggest, the longest we've ever walked in our entire lives. The original plan was to get the train with the bin and just walk down and see what happens. <laughs> we spoke to Gary and luckily he said, I'll be your support vehicle. Just want to say a massive thanks to Gary because you've made this trip, mate. <laughs> and uh, obviously a massive thanks to Big Moose. You guys are just absolute angels on earth. And the work you do is just incredible, so this is just a tiny little thank you. <laughs> we've, we've just gone over £30,000, which is unreal. <laughs> so the money that you guys are donating is going to go to such an amazing cause. 
you know, saving lives, which is why we're here. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all the support. We've got the best people around us, and you're all champions as well. And yeah, I want to say, Craig, well done as well. Like, you're a big, big team player. You're the, you're the best person I could have done this with. And it was either going to be divorce or champions. <laughs> I'm a champion. <laughs> Yeah! yeah. 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 yeah.